Hey guys, it's Cyrus of Chaos. I'm here with John Normile, and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the past, the year 2000, for this World Cup, the finals of this World Cup in Paris, between Arndt Schmidt of Germany and Pavel Kalavka from Russia. These two were considered two of the great fencers during this time, but there aren't extensive records on that, that period of time on the FIE website, so I'm going to let John introduce himself and introduce the two fencers and tell us why he picked this bout. So, John, take it away. Okay, well, well thanks very much, Andrew. Um, right, so as Andrew said, this is John Normile. Uh, I've done a few other videos uh, on the Cyrus of Chaos channel, and they're always a lot of fun. Uh, I was on the U.S. National Epic team for a few years and, and had the, the good fortune to uh, represent the U.S. at the Olympics. Uh, and I fenced both of these fencers. Um, they're two of my, my favorite fencers uh, from back in that era. And this match um, is a good match to watch for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that we're really seeing both of these guys at their peak. Um, so it, it's a true clash of the titans. Um, our, our Schmidt uh, at this point is um, towards the end of his career, uh, but he was the Olympic champion in 1988. Oh, really? And he was um, a true force of nature for the intervening time. Uh, really a, a, a remarkable fencer to watch, and he, he could always be counted on to do very, very well. And Kolopkov um, was um, even greater, um, probably the greatest <laughs> fencer I've ever had the privilege to be on this trip with. Um, I've done another video on this channel on Kolopkov, and I said that he's, he's the, the Bruce Lee of fencing, the, the Muhammad Ali of fencing, um, and those are, those are apt metaphors. Uh, another way I, I think about him is that uh, I'm, I'm reminded of a metaphor that um, Richard Feynman uh, once used, or maybe it was used about Richard Feynman, the great physicist, that Richard Feynman was such a genius that when he would come up with uh, his great discoveries um, and he'd explain it to you, you could maybe understand it, but you'd have absolutely no idea how anybody could have ever figured that out. <laughs> and likewise with Kolobkov, there's, you, you watch him fence and and you, there's no way you could ever imagine that you, in this case me, could ever, ever do that, no matter how hard I train or no matter what I would do in my, my life, my fencing career. There's no way that I could emulate that with the kinds of actions and, and the kinds of um, fencing that he could do, that he's a, a genius beyond comprehension. So I can't speak highly enough for, for Pablo Kolokov. He's, he's an extraordinary fencer. Um, before we we get into the match, I'll, I'll give a, a few more background notes. Um, this is the uh, World Cup in Paris in 2000. Uh, Arn Smith is the reigning world champion. Um, Klopkov uh, is going to win the Olympics this upcoming year. So like I said, this is really um, the apex of both of these fencers. Um, I had spoken to Arn Smith uh, the previous year at the World Championships after their bout. They, they had fenced, Klopkov and Arn Smith had fenced. Um, in the in the semifinal, I had fenced. Um, I'm sorry, I had spoken to Arndt Schmidt at the World Championships in Seoul, Korea, and I congratulated him. And, and he remarked um, that he he said he he figured out how to fence Kolobkov. He figured him out, so he felt pretty good about the match. And then he was of course pretty happy about um, winning the World Championships. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, ten or so years later, I. I got to go to a, a fencing camp with Kolopkov when he was traveling around and running camps and did a camp in New York. And I asked him about that match in 99 versus Schmidt. And I said, well, what do you have to say about that match? And he said, well, you know, I, I, I pretty much had already qualified for the Olympics, so I, I wasn't too motivated to fence it. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of an interesting commentary to see both sides of that. Um, Schmidt figured, thought he had figured him out totally, and, and Kolopkov at least he was claiming that he wasn't giving his best. So, um, uh, before we start, I'll just say a few more words. Um, Arn Schmidt, uh, like I said, the um, Olympic champion in 88, uh, kind of the ideal proportions for an epic fencer. He's about 6'2", 6'3", very slender, very lanky. <laughs> um, a classic he, uh, string bean. He, uh, yeah, string bean, but incredibly powerful. He, he has the, the, the very classic German style of hitting the opponent by dominating the blade 
and he'll do a lot of actions where he'll he'll look in second and look and then turn around and pick it up in six or a, a six circle six, um, or the other way, uh, six second, um, doing a second attention attack um, on the blade, um, and, and he has uh, a pretty explosive um, uh, footwork uh, where he, he can come charging down the strip looking for your blade in all these different directions. So if you are trying to do a phantom tempo, you have to you have to guess right basically. Mm. Um, another thing that's noteworthy about Arn Schmidt um, that I think gives him his power uh, is that he's very good at coordinating uh, his point and his blade when he takes these actions. And, and I'm going to maybe get into the technical weeds a little bit, but when you're taking the blade in Epe, and I'm pretty sure in foil too, um, that you don't want to have the point lead too much and you don't want to have the point lag too much from... The, the, the binding or parry action you're taking. You don't want to have the point lead too much because then it, it, you, you break the wrist and, and you don't get a lot of force on your opponent's blade. It, it's, it's kind of a, it's a bad angle. Mm. And you don't want it to lag too much because you're not closing the line soon enough and you're, you're, you're vulnerable to getting hit. Yeah. So not too much, not too little. Archman is a master at it. So it, it's like, it's almost like this beam of light that's coming from his, um, from his wrist or from his elbow even that doesn't lead doesn't lag doesn't lead and it gives him such tremendous leverage it's like the um, goldilocks speed yeah yeah and, and you'll see it as, as you watch him fence um he, he's always ready to, to pounce on you his footwork looks like a coiled spring um he has has this sometimes he uses the german what i call a herky jerky style where the hand and the feet are going in opposite directions and what the, the German fence is trying to do is to get them where the, the hand's coming back, the feet are coming forward, and then they have that hand foot tempo advantage to jump up on you. Yep. He does that sometimes, like a lot of other Germans, like Jörg Fiedler is another example of that. Um, all right, so that's enough about Schmidt. Um, and then Pavel Kolopkov, um, incredibly explosive, probably the best footwork in the world. He's a, he's a master at being exactly where he wants to be exactly at the right time. Physically, um, an anomaly. Uh, just, just a, a 99, two, three, four, five, six sigma kind of fencer, uh, and he's he can he's modified the technique to take advantage of that. Um, he he has a kind of a an extended back leg and is on guard that lets him get uh, a quicker flesh. He can he can initiate a flesh more quickly. Hmm. He, he he tends to lean back when he takes a parry, so that it, it's. It's a little bit further away to hit him. He gets however many microseconds of advantage uh, when the, the fencer is attacking him. Um, and, that, yeah, and that's enough of me talking. Let, let's get to the bout. Okay. <laughs> so Schmidt will be on the left and Kolobkov will be on the right in this bout. Right, right, right. And it's cool that that like the the rules and the the metagame of Epe have changed so little that footage from this time twenty years ago is still extremely relevant. Whereas yeah. in in Saber, if you're looking at stuff that's more than like a year and a half old, it's almost not worth watching at this point. Mm. Yeah, that's true. The one thing that is different is um, that fencers are much less conscious of the clock. They didn't have the different um, non-com rules, yeah. Or, rules. Or were there so, were there any non-combativity rules at this point? I don't believe so. Um, and what you're going to see in this first period, they go for the full three minutes um, with just two points scored. Um, and here we see Kolopkov um, uh, from a pretty relatively long distance uh, doing some preparations to draw out uh, Schmidt. Schmidt's not really taking the bait. Yeah, he's pretty uh, content Schmidt, to sit back right now, it looks like. Yeah. I think Schmidt is waiting for Klopkov to commit himself. How um, important but, would you say the first touch is in a bout like this? Um, it's very important, but it's not critical. Um, so, certainly take it seriously. And at the end of the bout, if you lose it by a touch, then uh, you can look back and say, I wish I tried hard on that first touch. But... <laughs> You can touch about. There's plenty of opportunities to correct your mistakes and, and catch up. 
Right. What so, I mean is, like, so, some sometimes you see fencers who are so concentrated on their defense that they don't want to attack at all, and they're willing to just... They're willing to wait, like, nine minutes if the opponent is not willing to attack them. But this is not about like that. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, yeah. Okay. And what you're going to see... Ooh! <laughs> there. <laughs> ah, and, we missed it. Yeah. We missed it, yeah. That, that, that's, unfortunately, that's the, the worst thing about this particular video. We missed that first <laughs> touch. Uh, it looks. I, my guess is that Kolokov immediately changed direction and jumped on him the way Schmidt kind of lost his balance and got caught on... Um, he got, got surprised by that. But that was an example of what you were talking about earlier, about how Schmidt has the ability to push forward really hard and be on the blade a lot. Yeah, exactly. Um, like that, in that case, it was a second circle six, circle six. And that's, that's his signature style. So now he's down, so he, he knows he has to go. Push a little more. Also can't quite see the, the time right now. I can't. Yeah. I can't see on the scoreboard what the time is. So, yeah, yeah. it's about a minute and a half in. Right. So Kolokov, um let the distance get a bit close. Uh, Schmidt wasn't quite ready to to go, and Kolokov took the uh, initiative to take it to him. Uh, with a faint deceive. Yeah. yeah. Looks like uh, Schmidt was trying to draw something, but Kolokov was a step ahead and went around. The reaction to that, right, and um, it was very close, and I think Schmidt um, didn't pull the trigger quickly enough. Mm. Um, and I think that's what he's thinking now that I need to um, <clears throat> be pressed, be a bit more aggressive. Well, perhaps not. <laughs> so I, I think they're trying to figure each other out here. Yeah. It actually does. You you mentioned uh, Hurg Fiedler before. It actually it does remind me of that a bit. Yeah. Well, the the, the different national s schools of fencing, um, they, they definitely exist, and you can see it very clearly. The Schmidt is uh, that's that's the minute, that's the period, yeah. second period now. Yeah, Schmidt is certainly a, an exemplar of of the German school. So this is um. <clears throat> This is a good touch coming up. Showing uh, Kolokov's uh, uh, tactical finish. Yeah, again, Smith missed pushing. Kolokov manages the distance just perfectly. And does a very, technically, very difficult action a four bind disengaged lunge uh, and nails him. Yeah, I see what you're saying about leaning back a little bit when he's taking the parry. Mm, yeah. Which is not a great thing for a beginner to do, but once you really understand your distance, those that that tiny little extra amount of space can be really, really important. Yes, certainly. Certainly at the margins, these guys are fencing. Yeah. So while the last I, touch, I think. While I was saying that, we totally missed that touch. Right um, we're gonna roll it back. Yeah, we yeah. are. So I think Schmidt now is saying, I, I'm, "I'm, I need to adjust the um, risk reward calculation. I need to push him." And Klopkov is saying, "No, no way." <laughs> So there was no disadvantage, distance advantage for um, Schmidt, and all caught was strong enough to easily handle that with a parry post. 4-0 against the world champion. Yeah. It's looking like a blow. And I think Schmidt is, um, again, <laughs> rushing in. That's not going to work. Um, I need to play a bit more, which is what he did here. Yeah. Let's watch that last one more time before we get to this next one. Okay. <laughs> so perhaps a second attention pair or post um, at the right t timing, the right distance for Schmidt. Sometimes Kolobkov gets a little bit overconfident. That, that's one of his flaws. The yeah. function of him being so good. I would, I would uh, say that was a, a calculated risk. He tried to do something a little different when he was up by four points. Uh, okay. I mean, it may not have been the best idea, but I mean, it, it's something different, you know? Sure. And now, now Schmidt is... Um, working the distance, being a bit more careful, and he's pulling the trigger uh, a little quicker, not giving Kolokov the chance to uh, make, make, take the initiative. And also, um, he's anticipating the pair repose from Kolokov, and he did that 
he held the blade a little bit, and that's how he got around Flawkov's carry. Mm. So, I'm guessing, and, and pause it for just one second. So, in, in this commentary, I'm going to um, presume to guess what these fences are thinking. Uh, and who knows if I'm right or wrong, um, <laughs> and if it ever happened to walk tune into this channel and comment themselves the apologies in advance that I get it wrong <laughs> but I'm going to presume to um, guess what they're thinking and I think that's pretty helpful because it, it can show the the tactical fluidity the, the tactical thinking that you see in this match of what happened in the last touch and what what should I do to counter it mm -hmm. the, the, the general theme of this out is not where there's one solution uh, that this fencer or that fencer has come up with that they just apply. Um, they're changing many, many times in, in response to um, the touches they're getting hit, um, they're receiving and they're hitting. So in this case, um, Klokov just, just got hit because um, Schmidt anticipated him doing a fair repost. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that Klokov would say, better stop doing that, I better um, no longer give so many opportunities for an attack um, avoiding my blade. I'm going um, to go in. I'm going to not parry. I'm going to attack or, or counterattack. Let's, so let's see what happens. Definitely looks like Kolobkov is being more active and holding his space a little better. Yeah. Yeah, and he's he's going in. Um, and I get the sense that Schmidt is isn't really quite sure what to do here. Um, he, he's kind of staying in his comfort zone. Oof. Look at those second six actions, and Klopkov is seems very confident, very comfortable in doing what he's doing, doing great, and looking for the the moment where he can take an advantage and make an attack. Schmidt's trying to get really, really close. Yeah, they seem really close to each other. And, oh, there we go. So that, that's what I was saying before. Klokov decided to not give the opportunity of whipping the blade around so much and then seizing the moment uh, with just a simple straight attack. Mm. Let's see that one again. Okay. So I'm thinking Schmidt said, I need to go first. I got stuck last, I got hit last time because I, I, I hesitated too much. I'm going to go first. Um, and he took a big step and Claw Claw was right on top of him. Yeah, it was it was the big step I wanted to see again because it looked like he closed distance too quickly and Claw Claw was just very ready to attack into that. Right, right. right. So now I'm thinking, I'm guessing that Schmidt is saying... Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> a little unlucky. <laughs> That's a testament to how much power Schmidt has. Uh, and he's able to, to catch up Kolokov's blade. He's no, no weakling himself. Um, like, basically pairing the hilt <laughs> of Kolokov's blade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got the touch. So now my, um, my, my thought for what they're thinking, what Schmidt is thinking is he needs to, he's saying to himself, uh, it's not really working for me just at the end of the strip. I need to move around a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Buried the distance back and forth. Yeah, I was, I was thinking something similar. He's either being too passive and waiting too long or being too aggressive and, and having Kolobkov control the space that he's trying to take. Right, but now he's so now, he, okay. he's mixing it up between both, and it's harder to to figure out exactly what your opponent is doing at that point. Yes. So pause it for one second. So what you just saw is another <clears throat> is an example of another one of um, his uh, 
his strengths, uh, th- this kind of insisting counterattack. He, um, he's very good at, with the blade and, and second six and se- six second, but he scores a lot of points um, with that, that straight counterattack with a very hard hot outside high line that, that pushes its way in, which is exactly what happened here. Uh, yeah, Kolobkov looked like he even tried to parry that. Yeah, well, he, he, it, it was um, like some kind of combination action on Kolobkov's part, but Schmidt was able to get the point in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also an example that he, he, th- this is, I think, Schmidt's ideal distance. Uh, not too close, not too far, enough to provoke Kolobkov's action, but then he can use his height. That, that height, his height, his reach, uh, and his strength to, to push through that, that counterattack. Okay. So now I think Schmitz thinks he's got a plan. Watch this touch. He's still, oh boy. <laughs> that's one of the best touches of the bout. Second bind, faint high, go low. Um, and Schmitz was not expecting that. I think he was still looking to play and work that distance for a counterattack. But at this long distance, Kolobkov made took took the initiative and made that touch. Yeah, it was very fluid looking. Oh, yeah. And one reason he got caught, because he was moving and giving a lot of foot tempos. I think Schmidt is now saying, <clears throat> better watch the foot tempos slow it down a little bit. And this is the interesting thing. Kolobkov immediately goes back to the previous game plan. And what's that? That's the time. So third period now. <coughs> Kolobkov immediately, you'll see, he'll go back to the previous game plan of his part of letting Schmidt get really close. And, uh, well, let's see what happens. I don't want to give a spoiler. <laughs> He's getting closer against Schmidt is. Volkov's letting him. Yeah, I like and the way... It's, it's kind of the same the way uh, Schmidt is either deciding he's going to, like, push a little more, a little harder, versus, like, stand still a little bit more. And Kolobkov is kind of doing the same thing. Sometimes he's letting himself get pushed, and sometimes he's pushing back. Sure. But what I think is significant is um, that when Kolobkov recognized what Schmidt was doing, <clears throat> um, like what he's doing towards the beginning of the bout... Of, of pushing, getting getting closer, to looking to set up some kind of attack at the end of the strip for Kolokov. Kolokov immediately recognized that and changed his game to counter it mm. with that, that straight attack um, seizing the initiative when the distance was close. He didn't have to get hit for him to realize that. He, he realized that the game was changing in the middle of the bout, which is the mark of a great fencer. Yeah. I think a lot of people say sometimes that like, this person won that bout because of experience or something. And a lot of the time, young fencers don't really understand what that means. But that is a good example of it, I feel. Using yes. using what you understand from your your previous bouts to to be able to make an informed but, decision based on what's touches. happening in this bout. Yes. But you're not so much your bouts, but even the previous touches. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> your, your, whole, your whole combined experience as a fencer. Yep. So there, um, Schmidt was changing a little bit. He was looking for the blade more than previously, and again, Kolobkov immediately recognized that and um, responded with the appropriate action of feint deceive. <clears throat> so if I were Schmidt, I would be very flummoxed. I would not know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Kolobkov is countering every single thing. That I not just flummoxed, very flummoxed. Very flummoxed. But he's not giving up, so... Um, yeah, nor should he. No, no. Uh, so the previous touch against him was a feint deceive, um, but the counter to that is to look for the blade twice. Uh, in, in those, like, for example, a second six, which is what he's doing now. Mm. But it didn't work. Because, uh, again, I, I, I think he kind of tried the second six, but Flopkov picked the time and the, the distance for that, that straight attack. I like that he's taking a second between the the touches to think about it. Oh, yeah. 
Like a lot of time you'll just see the person want to get back on guard. But again, the mark of a great fencer is being able to take and process that information. Yeah, because that is fencing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so the, the counter, or the correction could be um, to pull the distance a little bit to give Schmidt time to get the blade around, which I think is what he's doing here. So they're not quite, he's not quite as close. That was interesting. Ooh! <laughs> you like that, huh? I, no, I did not. <laughs> a little known fact that uh, Schmidt was actually a foil fencer before he became an epic fencer. Oh, really? So, yeah, at the time, uh, he was really one of the only guys that were doing actions like that. Now, uh, it's quite common. Yes, yes, not exactly. Many people, not, pe not too many people were fencing epic like that. Um, the, the reason he got that point, I think, is um, he, he made that adjustment to um, pull the distance to give himself time to parry. And so there he took a gamble. Um, he, he made a, a flesh attack, pulling the arm, anticipating Klopkov to parry. Parrying, yeah. Uh, but he didn't. Klopkov just, just counterattacked for the double. And this time... Klopkov just counterattacked, so the, the solution to the, the straight counterattack would be a, a second six, which is what he does, but Klopkov... is no, a step no ahead way. again. <laughs> so, pause for a second. I, I, just to reiterate, um, this is an example of two master fencers that are so tactically fluid and aware that they're, they're changing um, every touch, what they're doing. Um, I think. I think. Um... I, I think these are all conscious choices, or if not conscious, then in the subconscious of, of their of their fencing minds. But uh, due to their their mastery and skill, it, it's a, really just an amazing match. Yeah, a lot it looks going like on. a blowout, but let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, there's still three minutes left in the video. <laughs> yeah, uh, eight to thirteen. Ooh, that makes things uh, a lot more the difficult. Call is on the dice. 9 to 14, um, doing a classic uh, hand preparation flesh, scoring a double. So obviously Schmidt's got to do something. There's three minutes left in the video. I wonder what it's going to be. Oof. Going back to that, that um, counterattack game, maybe. It's keeping it really tight and aggressive right now. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. This, he hasn't done too well. Oh, oh look at that. And if you had the audio on, you'd hear the howl of the Schmidt. He, nobody shouted more than Schmidt. Of the Schmidt. <laughs> to the toe. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> Total surprise. Yeah, is that Total. the first foot touch we've seen this bout? Yeah. And and Schmidt's a fencer that never goes to the toe. He, he, he was a fencer that focused on the high priority attack mm. uh, targets. The body and the arm, um, but he, you know, got to do something. He's rolling the big dice. Yeah. Uh, so Klopkov, well, he's um, thirty-one years old at this point. Schmidt's thirty-five. They're, they're at their peak. They're not. They're they're on the downside of their, their physical condition. So, they're they're. I think they're both getting kind of tired. You could see it from Klopkov there. Yeah. Ooh. Watch that one, one more time. Yes. Okay, right. This is significant. Um, Schmidt had been doing second six the whole match. Now it's six second. Hmm. So he, he's changing things um, to see what works, knowing what doesn't work from the previous touches of the match. Oh my God, that was crazy. Another crazy touch. Yeah. Um, like that, that's a you, you jump forward to close the distance and then uh, some kind of a squatting counterattack. Klopp was looking for the four and he would have hit it if Schmidt hadn't squatted, but because he displaced the target, he, he went over the shoulder. Yeah. He hasn't done too much of that, this bout yet either. I haven't done any of it. This is all, um, I mean, he's pulling stuff out of his ass. <laughs> Oh, 
club. I'm so, getting a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, this can't be happening. What's going on? <laughs> so that's that's one of the more successful games that Schmidt had come up with. That that receding counterattack using his height. <laughs> I just want to get a double. No, no. Oh man. So that was a, a big mistake on Club Cross Party. He rushed it. Um, wasn't a good attack. He, he was, I think, trying to do a um, a faint deceiver on Schmidt's parry. Maybe looking, expecting a second parry, but it wasn't the right time. 14 14. Wasn't it just 9 14 a minute ago? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked, John. So here it is. And the crowd is. They're not on their feet, but they're certainly excited. <laughs> and here we see um, the final action. Long distance, very long distance. I think Smith's still trying to score on that receding counterattack idea. It's a long distance. This is the first time long. it's been tied since 0 0, isn't it? Yeah. <gasps> oh. well, well. Smith's not getting close. And there we go. Honestly, it's amazing that Kolobkov was able to be so confident at that point in the bout, considering he just lost five straight touches in a row. Like he, yeah. he definitely looked a little nervous the the previous couple touches, but you could see like he walked around and composed himself between between those touches and the last one. And here he looks much more comfortable. He's not trying to rush anything. Well, that's why. He's Kolopov, and that's why he's, <laughs> he's a great fencer. So true. Um, so what happened there, I think, he, he set it up where he, he had the long distance, he made the hand preparation, drawing the counterattack from Schmidt, but he immediately followed up with um, the real action, the flesh to the body, and he kind of put Schmidt, he, he froze Schmidt in place uh, so he couldn't recede away and, and open the distance to score with that counterattack. Um, and then Klopkov was able to score with, finally with that flash. So it was a, it was a, a masterful action, or really an amazing thing. Yeah, the whole bout was really good. Yeah. Um, one, one, one closing thought. Um, so it was, it was 9 to 14, and, and you had kind of a, a two-minute offense from, from Schmidt um, where he had nothing to lose. And he, he had I – mean, he's a great fencer too, and – he has plenty of tricks in his bag, nothing to lose. He, he, um, he did them all without fear of, of failure because there's nothing to lose. And he was able to bring it right back to 1414. And my old coach, Bill Reif, told me once that when you, you have a comeback, um, you have to be really careful now because when you, you tie the score – subconsciously deeply subconsciously there's such a tendency to relax and um maybe lose some intensity because you just achieved this 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 big comeback mm -hmm. and at the same time the other fencer is is more revved up than freaking out yeah and well he could be freaking out and, and causing him to fail or he could be focusing and deciding what to do um the most effective final action so if you come up, if you tie the score, you have, you have to be very careful that you don't relax and emotionally and also tactically to perhaps try and repeat what you've already done to get you there because you know that the, the other fencer is going to be doing something different. Yeah. So maybe that was, that was Schmidt's mistake that he was kind of basically doing the same kind of thing uh, that he, um, well, that was successful to getting here. But it's a very different game now between 13 14 and 14 14. Yeah. Um, yeah, a great match. Very good. Good recommendation. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of, it's, it's grainy video. It's not really up to your usual standards and the I mean, usual it's, current it's, FIU standards, but it, it, it reminds me of watching like, for example, a, like an old Muhammad Ali, Sonny Liston boxing match that, um, there's still a lot there. I appreciate the, uh, yeah, the totally. Yeah. Just because the video quality is, is low doesn't mean that it's not worth watching and that's the best you're going to get from that time anyway so yeah 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 anyway john thank you very much oh sure thank you there's a lot of fun for me to do and thanks for um letting me share this with uh, your youtube audience
Yeah, I'm always happy, especially in Epe, to look at the old fencers that people aren't paying as much attention to right now. And Kolobkov, everyone knows and loves him, but like Schmidt is amazing. And this is the first time I'd ever heard of him. But especially in Epe, there's, there's a lot of things that you can get from watching these old legends. Yes. A lot of that stuff is still very, very relevant today. So. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um, one final trivia. Um, Schmidt uh, carried the flag for the German Olympic team in 96. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And now I think he's a, he's a dentist. That's his profession. I think. <laughs> And that was, that was a joke. He was in dental school while he was competing. And, and we thought, my God, how, how terrifying that would be to sit in the dental chair with, with Arch Smith coming at you with a drill. Still requires some fine fingerprints. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway, thanks, John. Sure. Thank you.